Hey everyone, it's Jack. And today I'm gonna to take a look at Exodia OS. Exodia OS is an arts-based Linux distro and is based out of Egypt, I believe. This is a highly customized arts-based distro for all cybersecurity fields. This is really kind of fascinating. I mean, I'm not like really into cybersecurity. However, uh, they have a few different versions here and they have a home version, which is perfect for just everyday bald goobers like me. And of course, they also have an addition that's made for the Predator or a wireless version for penetration testing and so forth. Like, so if you're all into all that, but being that I'm just an average Linux user, I wanna try out the home version. And the home version, really have to know a bunch of stuff about security, but it does have some security aspects to it probably. I'm kind of more interested in kind of looking over the home editions and it comes in two different desktops here. So it's using the BSPWM window manager. It's also available with a DWM, I believe as well. And in the future, they are planning on adding some more uh, desktops as well. So I'm really kind of interested to see how that is, but I really would like to take a look at the BSPWM and kind of see how it's laid out and what the config is like. From what I've seen here, it's kind of browsing around. They really have it themed out really nice and there's a lot of themes available. So I'm excited to take a look at those. Time for me to dispense with my incessant babbling and get right down to it and download this baby. So I'm gonna download the home version right here, grab it and then load it in and I'll be right back. Okay, so here I am, I'm booting it and here's our boot menu. So I'm gonna just hit enter and just let it boot in and then we'll kind of see what this is like. And I'm assuming the live version is probably gonna be running BSPWM. I think that's kind of the flagship window manager if I remember right. And if I remember wrong, then it'll probably be DWM. But yes, I think it's uh, BSPWM. I'm kind of interested to see what the theming is like. And I kind of like the idea that the BSPWM is all themed out and everything. So I don't have to worry about trying to find a bar to use with it and so forth. And I believe this is using the poly bar. And wow, look at that background. <laughs> that is pretty stunning already. So that is cool. And I'm assuming the rest of it's here gonna load in here shortly. And this is loading the live version. So there's a lot of stuff that it's gotta kind of get off the ISO and then it'll populate here any second now. And there it is, all right. So, wow, looking good. Looks like we got a little error message up there, kind of related to the heat sensors, it looks like. And that's probably because I'm in a VM. I'm running KVM here, QEMU, or Vert Manager. So it probably can't detect heat sensors. Uh, but that's easy to take care of. I can mess with that. But here's our welcome screen. There's our Rofi menu. I think that's what they're running there. And then down here, we got a bottom bar. So we have our audio stuff there. Looks like a media player. And then we got our volume. And then over here, we got our other things like our network settings and CPU temperature and all that. And then over here, looks like a something, a link to GitHub and then a sys tray. Cool. And then this is our power bar here or menu. So that was just clicking down there in the lower right corner. Our installer is available right here too. So we can install Exodia right from the welcome screen. You can also update the Arch Linux mirrors if you wish. So all you'd have to do is just hit that and then authenticate and the live username would be Exodia. And really for the, I must have spelled it wrong. There we go. So yeah, for the suggestion box, I think uh, maybe putting Zodia, Exodia, the password, right here in the box would be good. So that way you know what it is. And now I'm just gonna run the installer. It looks like I gotta add in the password again. So we'll type in Exodia, and that should launch the installer. And there it is, excellent. So now we have our installer here. Just gonna get that out of the way. I believe it's Super C, we'll close that. Or you can just come up here and click it, I think. Or hit quit, I mean. Uh, but I think it was Super C. So, wow, nice looking installer uh, right off the bat. And really cool graphics in there. It kind of has this uh, kind of a retro feel, but modern hackish at the same time. I'm just going through the defaults. These are all just kind of defaults. It detected my location, keyboard, and so forth. Desktop is BSPWM. And then under all, uh, right at the moment, if you pick all, it, it'll install both that are available. But they have noted that there are a lot more that are a work in progress. So I think we'll be seeing more desktops show up as options here pretty soon. 
in the future anyway. So I'm going to go with the BSPWM flagship there. And then for our disk settings, I'm just going to select erase disk and just erase everything. And I think I'll add in uh, a swap to file there as well for an option. And then aside from that, I think I'm good with all the defaults. And I'm also going to scooch up a little bit. Maybe I'll just select the ButterFS as well. That's cool. Yeah, I can go with that. Then we'll hit next. Then I'll just add in a username. Go with the old standby Toadwick. And then add in a password and retype it. And everything else is good. So I'm going to use a password for administrator account. That's good. And that's good. So I'm going to hit install. And there we are. Cool. And there's that kind of cool graphics there. So if you own a Predator laptop, that's a customized install just for that type of laptop. So I find that kind of interesting too. So I'm just going to let this finish installing. I'm going to pause the video and I'll be right back when it's done. Okay, and we are all booted in now. So, wow, looking nice. And here we have our about screen. And I think that works. Cool. I just hit super enter just to see if we would get a terminal. And we did. And I believe it's running alacrity, if I remember right. I'm just going to amplify that a little bit. And let's do a sudo pacman hyphen s y u and update this. There we go. And we'll just run an update here real quick, kind of get that out of the way, and then let that do its thing. And I always like to start with a fresh update, and I'll hit Y for or just enter. And then we'll let this update, I'll pause it, and then I'll be back in a flash. And I messed up a little bit. Okay. <laughs> Wow. Yeah, I used the keyboard combo there to pause my video and it kind of messed up the update when I did that. So apparently that keyboard combo kind of conflicts with something. So now it's running again. I just kind of redid the update and there we Wow! Double stunning. Wow. Check out that wallpaper. So they even updated the wallpaper. That looks really cool. Uh, even better than the original. I love the colors in it and it's just really over the top. Wow. <laughs> What can I say? So that's a great first impression. And I love the color scheme with the kind of the violet overtones there. And that couldn't be a more perfect wallpaper for this theme. That is really great. So big thumbs up there. And I'm going to right click on the desktop here. And when I do that, uh, we get a menu here. So we can kind of see our menu. And I'm going to open up Thunar because I'd like to take a look at the config file. This is probably what I'm going to concentrate the most on during this look here. And so there's our alacrity in BSPWM. Definitely running alacrity there as our default terminal. And I kind of suspected that's what it was running. Now I know for sure. And it looks like I need to reboot the machine too after that update because it looks like it did some big updates. So I'm just going to go in here. I'm going to hit reboot. And by the way, the Windows X will take care of that or Super X. And there's our splash screen. Our grub screen is even customized there. So that was kind of cool looking too. I like that. And really nice splash there. Very cool. So I am like really impressed with this so far. And I'm just logging in here and there's that awesome wallpaper again. Nice. And then our Exodia Assistant. I'm just going to close that for now, but I, maybe not. And there's that error message, so I should probably get rid of that too, just to kind of make it look nicer here for the first look. And besides that, it'll help us understand the layout of the configs too. So the first, there's our different desktop. So up here you got that selector. You can also use Super 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and so on uh, to go to your different desktops. But you can also simply click on the poly bar up here and then uh, select. So I'm going to right click and let's go to applications and just kind of get a quick look at what's on here. A lot of stuff and I really like the way that's laid out. Very cool. And then that opens up the Rofi menu. And so here we can see all the different apps in here. And also, of course, we can just hit search and look for something and bring it up instantly that way, which is usually the quickest way. So nice. And if you want to get out of there, just click off to the side. And then let's take a look at another tab. So here we got a listing of all the default key bindings here. So this is pretty handy, so we won't get lost. So super enter opened up my terminal, so that's cool. I know that works. And then they have like a super shift enter if you want to have it floating. And then that's where our browser opens up, I'm assuming. And I just did a control alt T. And that brings up our theme menu. These are all the different themes. Wow. I just clicked on one here. I forgot what I just clicked on, but wow. <laughs> that looks really red and cool. 
Nice. Okay. And now I can see that error message a little easier. So yeah, it's kind of looking for a file there in the polybar scripts there. And it looks like it's specific to each theme too. Let's scroll over. Let's try um, Amelia. I think that was. And wow, that's got a cool look. I kind of like that too. It changes the wallpaper and changes the layout too. So now we have one bar at the top as opposed to the original. Let's right click here and I'm going to try to find that. We're going to open up our file manager and just jump into our config. And then we want to go into our BSPWM folder. And then I'm going to go into themes and I'm in Amelia right now. It's pointing to this folder right here, the polybar scripts inside the Amelia themes. So if I open this guy up here the, under heat sensors, it looks like I can probably just, that's what it's looking for. It was pointing to line 14 there. I could probably comment this whole thing out here and then that should probably just get rid of all that. I'm going to see if I can just do a, a group comment here. Uh, I guess that works in C++, but not... <laughs> And uh, whatever this is running here, I think it's just bash script. So I'm just going to do it the easy way and just make a bunch of hashtags. Hashtag. And then I'll just repeat all the way down. And we'll comment that out. And finally, the ending bracket there. And done. And I think that's... And wow, it just disappeared right there on the fly. So very cool. I didn't even have to restart the session or the BSPWM. Uh, to do that, by the way, I believe it's just Control shift r and that'll restart it, uh, like if you're in some of the other config files. But that looks a lot better, a lot more civilized. Let's look at some other themes here. And since that was theme-specific, that message is probably going to come back if I change it. Islamic Nights is the default. Let's try Japanese Street, maybe, or there's Street 2. I'm going to go with Street and just kind of see what that looks like. That looks like a cool one. Yeah, I like that. Wow, cool background. Really like the bar. And as I expected, the message came back, but now that's pretty easy to fix. <laughs> but uh, it would be kind of cool if some of these things were like in a file that was more global, that was accessible. So there might be certain functions that you might in the future consider having global instead. But here, I, I like this over here. I'm kind of more comfortable with the desktop switcher there on that side. So that's kind of cool. And I still got my soon are open. So I'm going to back out of themes and now I'm going to go into, I think it was Japanese city and that would be right over here. Wait, a uh, street. Yeah, that's right. And then polybar scripts. And then we'll just go in here and we already fixed this one. So I'm just going to copy this and then pop over to here and then paste that in. And by the way, it looks like the default editor is Genie, which is really handy because I love the tabs on there. That way I can kind of keep them open. And I hit Control S and now it's gone. Control S will save. Yeah, now it's looking like it should. Very cool. So we got our desktop switcher here on top with our polybar. And then our other cool things in here like the microphone and so forth. And that says none. So I think that's something that's probably not there. And that's not there, uh, whatever that is. And we can probably figure out what that is in the config again. So instead of having one file, uh, this is kind of broken down and organized into different files. So it might be a little bit different if you're used to running BSPWN out of one big config file. And I'm not super familiar with BSPWM, but I know enough to be dangerous, I think. <laughs> so let's go to Polybar and then go into our modules here. And it should be under modules. This modules file should pertain to the items that are up there in the bar. So if I go down here, we got like our module brightness. And so that thing, I'm assuming must be the brightness. Given that I'm using a virtual machine, a VM, uh, the backlight is probably not even relevant. Probably what I ought to do is just take the backlight out of that list. And so if I go back to my file manager, go to polybar and scripts, there's probably something in here related to the backlight or not. <laughs> That's probably located somewhere else. Uh, let's see where what file that would have listed. Hmm. I'm going to go back to my Islamic Nights. I just want to kind of compare the module, the scripts, and I don't see the brightness in here either. Yeah, so it must be referenced somewhere else. Uh, there's the weather, though. I'm going to keep that on file for the future. And then back into modules here. And so if I look in here, I'm going to just kind of copy and paste into there and just see if that makes a difference. So I copy the contents of the modules file from the default 
Islamic Nights and put it into here, into the Japanese street, just to see if it changed anything. And not, yeah, so I got to find a reference that references top bar, like top right, top top left. So let's go into polybar config and see if it's in here. Hmm. And see if I'm getting warmer here. Okay, how about we back out and jump into Japanese street polybar. That would probably be better. And go into config here for this because we're in the Japanese street. I was in the wrong theme. Okay, now let's scroll down and take a look. Ah, uh, yeah, here we go. Modules left, modules right. So this is what we're looking for. So if we go over here, these correspond to the upper right on my bar here. So right after the pulse audio, we got this mon thing. So there's our microphone. So if I go over here and look at mic, uh, there's something in here called BNA. I don't really know what that is, but I, I think that's supposed to be brightness. So let me type in brightness and see what that does. And let me do control shift R and that refreshed our BSPWM and now it disappeared. So yeah, I think brightness is something that's not relevant to a VM. Again, brightness didn't show up. So yeah. And I'm going to reload this because uh, it changed here in the config. So that's a genie message and that's kind of cool. So I'll let that reload. And here where battery is, reload there. So here where battery is, that's not relevant because I'm not using a laptop. So I'm changing that to themes and that should let our themes show up. And then I'll save that, refresh with control shift R and there it is. So cool. So now our theme selector is showing up there in the bar and brightness is still apparently not relevant being that I'm in a VM. So let's replace that with something else. Hmm. And I'm not really sure what to put up in there. Maybe a weather app. I'll try X backlight first. Yeah, I didn't really expect that to work, but <laughs> I just thought I'd try. All right. Uh, anyway, I want to try the weather app and just see if that uh, shows up because I'm not spotting the weather right off the top of my head there. We'll do weather and then refresh it again. Control shift R and there it is. Excellent. Nice. All right. So that's working. So that kind of makes the bar more complete, kind of fills it in with stuff instead of just having a blank right there. Oh, wow. Okay. I do have the weather out up there. So, wow. Uh, I really can't think of anything else to put in there. So I think I'm just going to take that out altogether. So I'm going to remove the separator and the weather, and then that'll make room for the separator after that. But yeah, I got to reload that first. They're way better. Okay, so that kind of made more room too. <laughs> so nice. And I like having easy access to the themes there. So that worked. So that's really how you can just kind of modify things. And we'll hit reload. Okay, so now what I want to do is I want to kind of mess with our weather there. Uh, earlier off camera, I changed the location, the city location on there. And I'll show you how I did that. Also, I want to change it from centigrade to the imperial so if we go into our polybar and scripts, you can see we have our weather script here. So I'm just double clicking and opening that up in Genie. And if we scroll down a bit, uh, we should find something. Oh, actually, we don't have to scroll down. Up here, we have our app key and city ID, which points back to our Exodia config. But here we got unit, and by default, it's metric. So if we change that to imperial, which is also noted over to the right there, uh, then you can see right now it's no data, but... <laughs> After I save it, maybe refresh. Uh, there we go. Or not. So refresh, super shift R. And then it should refresh in Fahrenheit. And huh, 98 degrees centigrade. Fascinating. So if I go to BSP WM, go over here to Exodia Conf, open that up. And then if I scroll down here, you can see our weather API and our city ID. So if you want to change the city ID, easy peasy, just click on the weather widget there up in the bar, and then it'll automatically open up uh, your web browser to the weather and then just type in a city. So for example, London, and then we would choose this one here. And now you can see it's 25 centigrade. Wow. Warm one. Umpy. And so here's our city code. So all we got to do is just highlight that, which is at the end of the URL there, and then come back in here and then paste it in right there. And then that will get us to a London. And you can see that it's 76 degrees, but not centigrade. Otherwise, you'd be almost boiling. Ah. <laughs> 
So cool. Excellent. And I got myself distracted here. Let's take a look in the Exodia Assistant here. Uh, these tips is the third tab here, and this is pretty handy. So if you ever get those PHP or PGP signature errors when you're trying to run an update or you want to change your grub theme, that, that's really handy to have. So that's a nice reference. And then we got our settings here, and that's something that's a work in progress, under construction, I guess. So that's going to be coming along soon uh, for features. And here's our developers. And so we got Mahmoud Mohammed and Abdullah Adham and Omar Esmail. Uh, and I'm really sorry if I butchered your names, <laughs> but you guys rock. Man, you're, you're really making a great distro here, and I am just so impressed so far, uh, especially with the theming and all this and how well it's organized and the scripts. Very cool. And then over here, we have our Exodia OS apps, easy access here, Gparted, Discord, Telegram, GitHub, and YouTube. So a very nice assistant. And then right-clicking here, uh, we have easy access to our terminal, PowerShell, web browser, file manager. And I like that I have easy access to that. And actually, I don't know if there's a keyboard shortcut. I don't remember seeing one. So if I go back in here, this is our file. <laughs> and so BSPWM needs something to handle uh, keyboard bindings. It doesn't have something in there by default. So what they are using is SXHKDRC. <laughs> uh, I, I think I got all the letters right. Ugh. Anyways, uh, and I think there's actually a pronunciation for that, but I wouldn't even dare to try what that is. Uh, so I just say and that kind of works for me. But anyways, with that installed, that's also the name of the config file here, uh, which is located right in the config BSPWM key bindings folder. So easy access to it, and it, I kind of like the idea of having a separate file here just for the key bindings. It kind of makes things a lot easier. So I'm adding in Thunar right now here under the applications. Very well organized. So I'm going to kind of go with Super Shift T uh, for to activate Thunar. Then I'm going to type in Thunar, and then save it, and then Control Shift R, and then we'll give it a try now. So Super Shift T, and there you go. Nice. Excellent. So easy access to Thunar. That's looking good. Well, that's how easy it is to do key bindings. And of course, the syntax and language is very intuitive. And then here's our open weather. Right now it's in floating mode. Uh, so I think it's opening that way by default. And let's check our help oh, about and kind of see the version. So it's running Google Chrome. Nice. 116.0. And I think we also have uh, Firefox installed on here too. I can't remember the key binding, but you can also see those under applications here visually. And then Unar automatically opens up under this tab. And that's done through the rules. If we go into config BSPWM and then go into bin, I think it is, and then BSP rules. And there we go, BSP rules. So if we go down here, we can see all the different rules. And so we can have things open up in specific workspaces. So here you can see that Firefox, Chromium both open up in Workspace 2. And also the Brave browser as well. Nice. And so uh, that's how you make things specific. And so here you can see that uh, PC Man FM, Thunar, and Kaja, like I was just pointing to before, opens up in Workspace 3. Here I'm just going to download Inkscape and then type in my password because I want to add Inkscape in here and then just direct it to a specific workspace just so you can kind of get a, a feel for how that works. And so now we got that installed. And if I go back to my Genie here, which is in desktop four, then I can actually add that in here in my rules. And so I can just go down here and then just type in BSPC rule hyphen A and then Inkscape and then desktop equals and then single quote and then that funky little sign there that's shift six and then single quote again follow equals on that means it'll follow over to the desktop so it'll take you to that desktop too and then we'll save that and i don't know if you have to refresh the bspwm to actually make that take effect or not but I i'm assuming you probably would even from the rules there and then finally we'll add in the focus equals on there cool and i think we probably got to add it in our keyboard shortcuts well i'm pretty sure we do so now uh inkscape will open up in workspace 5 because 
Uh, I just told it to. No real reason. <laughs> it just sounded like a good number. So now I refresh that. And then let's go over to our keyboard thingy here. And I'm just going to go down here and just add in an entry for Inkscape. So let's just do a hashtag Inkscape. This is a comment, so it doesn't get executed. And then I'm going to type in, let's see, let's make it, I don't know, how about super plus I and see how that goes. And then we'll go in here and type in Inkscape. That is our command. And we'll save that and then refresh our desktop. Control Shift R. And then let's give it a try after I close that. <laughs> okay, so Super I. Wait, that's Shift I. Uh, super. There we go. All right. Save. Refresh desktop. Close splash screen. Okay, now let's try Super I and see what that does. Oh, that belongs to something else. Okay, so that's our internet info. <laughs> so I guess I should have checked first. I guess what I'll do then is let's try Super plus Shift I and see if that belongs to anything. So I'll save it, refresh, close splash screen, click, and try again. So now I'm going to press Super Shift I. And nothing. So I wonder if that belongs to something. Let me just copy that, and then I'm going to open up my find here. And it does belong to something. So, okay, that's kind of related to our window focusing or something. So, yeah, let's not use that. How about Super, Super something that nobody would think of? like Z. So Super Z, I, that's probably not taken. I'm just going to do a search for it real quick. Super plus Z next and can't find it. So excellent. That one is available. So I'm going to save Control Shift R. Close the splash screen. Click. <laughs> All right. So now if I hit Super Z, it should open up and there it is. Uh, but it's not in Workspace 5. Hmm. Interesting. So at least we know Inkscape is launching, so we got the keyboard part done. But for some reason, the rules aren't working there, and it's not directing it over to Workspace 5. And there it's floating, too. I believe Workspace 5 is tiled, so I just hit Super Spacebar to tile that to tiled. Toggle that to tiled, but it's not there. Of course, I could manually push it over there by using Super Shift and then press 5, and that would send it over to Workspace 5. Uh, but we want it to open there. So I'm going to go back here to BSP rules and let's kind of, I'm going to do a search for Inkscape. Maybe it's already in here somewhere noted. So let's do a find. And that's what I did. So let's go next. Hmm. Okay. So not seeing anything referencing Inkscape. Ah, here it is. I just had to scroll down. Uh, apparently it's case sensitive, that search, because I just found it here with an uppercase I. So it's down here uh, under all these uh, maps here. So these are all different apps that are opening up in Workspace 7, it looks like. So take that out. And then if we go back up here, find our Inkspace reference. And there doesn't seem to be any more. Cool. So let's give that a try. We'll save that. Close it. And that was open before, so I'll close that. And that's Super C. We'll close that. So now let me try again. Super Z. And now it opened in the same window that I'm in. So, wow. <laughs> Back to Genie. And I noticed the reference before was an uppercase I. So let me just change that. So I'm going to make that uppercase. Apparently that's case sensitive to the class name. So I'm going to hit Control S to save it. And then Control Shift R to refresh. Close the assistant. And now let's try it. Control Z. I mean, Super Z, and it's working. Yes, I'm in the fifth desktop. Nice. So now it's working, and it's coming up tiled. Excellent. So that's perfect. So that solved the Inkscape. So I got to remember that future reference. Sometimes it's case sensitive when you reference it there in the rules. And being as thorough as the development team is, they already had it referenced in there. So that's kind of cool. So those are the rules. So hopefully that'll give you a little bit more of a basic understanding. This is all 101. So I'd be here like for 10 hours if I went beyond 101. So there we got our all our stuff up here. And so the bar up there is looking nice, the poly bar. And these are all our different desktops, the stuff we have open. And I'm liking that. And there's our theme selector. So I like having easy access to our themes. So we can easily go through all those as well. And then our clock, if you click on that, it'll display the date. So here we have uh, today's date. And then our power menu. So that's, we can click that. Or you can just simply press Windows X and it'll bring up that 
menu if you want to log out or reboot or shut down and so forth. And here is our Rofi menu. And then, of course, our desktops. And you can also uh, see the status there, whether we're tiled or floating. And so when I hit the super space bar, you can toggle between the two, which is kind of cool. And then again, that's clicking that will bring up our Rofi menu and show us all kinds of stuff that's installed. And speaking of stuff, there's nitrogen. Here is a nice app that's already pre-installed here for our backgrounds. And when I hit that, wow, there's a lot of images already on here by default. So they really did a bang up job here getting wallpapers. A really nice collection, very impressive. I don't usually see this many wallpapers by default in a lot of distros. So I think that's cool. I think I'll just pick one and see what happens. I should be able to just change our background pretty easily through here. So like that, we got some footballers there. So if I hit that, and I'm going to get out of the way real quick, and I just hit apply, that'll apply the background. And then if I just go to a desktop that's free, we can see that our workspace is populated really nice. And there's the footballers. They look like they're uh, a German or a, I don't know who they are. But anyway, there they are, the footballers. And lots of cool things to choose from. And these look kind of colorful. I'm going to hit apply here and just see what that is. Jump over to another workspace. Whoa, she's kind of scary, like Android eyes. But cool colors anyway. Let's try that one and see what we got there. Nice landscape. Hmm, kind of looks like one of my neighboring planets that I've been to a few times. Nice. Oops, you didn't hear that. So let's look at our applications real quick. Here in our accessories, we got ah, tons of stuff here. We got NeoVim installed. There's Plank. Wow, didn't expect to see that. So we can pop that in there, and uh, that gives us a, a whole new look here. I like it. So easy access to some apps by default. So Plank could actually be a really nice addition here if you want to just kind of add something to the bottom there if you're using a theme that doesn't have the bottom bar. And so if I hit Control, right click, I can get to my preferences. And so I can change things here like icon zoom. I, I kind of like icon zoom. So I think I would keep that. So having that on makes it more interesting. And then here in our behavior, we got IntelliHide. I think all the defaults are good. And then these are some extra docklets that we can add. So if you want to put the dust bit of the trash here, we can drag that into the bar. And yeah, I forgot. It doesn't really like putting things on the end very much. So I could like put it right here and then just push it over to the end. And then we have our trash bin. So we have easy access to that, kind of like you would on a Mac. And then here's our clock. We can pop that in there too. Just stick it right in between the trash bin. And so it's an analog style clock. Nice. I like that. Very cool. So trash bin and clock. Uh, I think that's a good addition there. So yeah, even aesthetically, I think that just really works with this theme and that background even. <laughs> so cool. And so here on our uh, first workspace, looks like I got a couple of terminals open here. And if I want to go over to a free workspace, we can just kind of look at some of these. Like this, these are our open apps right now, the Alacrity and the Genie and the Thunar. So we can just switch right over to any of those just by clicking on them and it'll take us right over to the workspace and we can see the app right from Thunar. So that's pretty handy, you know, nice little easy access. And if you right click, ah, that's kind of surprising. I would expect when I right click to see a pin to dock or something to that effect, but I'm not seeing that. All I'm getting is close all and like a link shortcut to get over there. Hmm, weird. I'm pretty sure it had some kind of pin to dock or pin or keep on dock or something like that that should be there. I'm not really sure why that's not displaying in the right click. I don't know if that's a bug in the latest version of Plank or if there's something else going on there. Oh, there it is. Keep in dock. So on these items that are already pre-pinned on here, it seems like you can see that menu, but things that are open already, you don't have that. That's strange. I'm not really sure why. Typically, if you open up an app like Firefox or something, it shows up down in the bar and then you can just right click and keep in dock and then it'll stay there. But oh well. Under graphics, internet. So here we can see we got 
Firefox, Google, and web browser too. So that's the GNOME web browser, I believe. You got an Office, no Office programs installed, so you're free to install whatever you like. There's a Rofi menu and a theme changer. And then under settings, we got all kinds of stuff to work with for settings, which is really nice. Appearance, so if you want to kind of tweak your current theme. And then display settings, easy access, mouse and touchpad network. So this is really nice. This really kind of makes uh, configuring and tweaking your settings a little easier especially if you're kind of new to window managers and that's a little advanced for probably a lot of people but for others that would be handy too and then there's our ranger j menu htop might as well open up htop and just kind of look at our resource of course i got a bunch of stuff open right now and it didn't actually launch htop in the terminal so that's a little weird so i'm just going to type it and there we go that's not too bad considering all the stuff I got open. Probably if I closed all this stuff, it would be closer. I know at idle, typically when I tested it off camera earlier today, it was somewhere around 440, 450 megabytes at fresh idle. And it looks like we're around 570 right now. So that's pretty close considering that all, we've been running so much stuff. That's really not bad. So I think that's a good ballpark. But typically at idle though, at startup, it, it was right in the 400s there. And then under system, we got additionally uh, XFCE terminal if you want an alternate terminal. And then of course our alacrity here as well, which is running fish or ZSH, I think. And then there's a quick link to the edit config. So by clicking that, it'll take you to the BSP WM config file. And this is kind of a file where you can just kind of edit your config directories and so forth, your color schemes, where they're pointing to and so forth. So this file is a little bit different than the ones we were exploring, like the Exodia comp and the key bindings and rules and all that. But that's another config file or more things. So for a, a new person, that might be a little confusing. But once you understand the layout, it's actually really organized and, in my opinion, kind of nice. And there we go. I can't think of any more stuff to go over. So I guess I'll give my two cents on what I think about this. And I am really impressed. If I was going to use a, a different tiling manager and try out BSPWM, which I think I might. I've been exploring a lot of tiling managers lately anyway. I've been running Hyperlin in the Wayland side. Although Wayland still gives me a little bit of problems when it comes to like dragging and dropping files on certain applications like your archivers and so forth. And it seems a little bit heavy on resources sometimes as well. I've also been using Qtile and Qtile is really cool. I really like that. And BSPWM, I haven't really had a chance to explore a whole lot. And so that might be something that I might try out. And Exodia OS just might be the really a great way to go, at least for me, because I kind of have a little bit of understanding of programming anyway. And the way this is kind of modular and organized, it's something that I can wrap my head around, actually. It, to me, it's intuitive and it makes sense. It may not be for everybody, but it is for me. And on top of that, I don't have to worry about putting a bar in there because by default, you don't get a bar with BSPWM. So you got to find one and put it in there and then configure it from scratch, <laughs> which to me, I don't like to put in all that time. If I had more free time on my hands, I probably would like to do that because it's always a great learning experience to just kind of build things from the ground up. And so that's something I really do recommend for people that have the time to do that. But the fact that I can get a BSPWM tiling manager and desktop environment and everything all done for me in a distro, I think that's really cool. And this Exodia is so themed out beautifully. I can't say enough for the great job the developers have done. And like I said at the beginning, I believe this is an Egyptian distro. Wow, yeah, they know what they're doing. These three guys are really top notch from what I'm seeing here. And I can tell, yeah, it is still a work in progress. There's some things they're going to be adding to the assistants. They're adding window manager environments. And, and in my opinion, it's about as close to perfection BSPWM done for you distro that I would ever probably really expect to find. So I am definitely giving this a double thumbs up. And on top of that, I'm going to give it another double thumbs up for the development team. So you guys are cool. You rock. 
And with that, I hope this first look was helpful. And if it was, don't forget to leave that thumbs up again. Because it really does help in the algorithm. And so I really appreciate those thumbs ups and those likes and subscribes as well. And don't forget, subscribing is always cool, especially when it's on my channel. So give it a go. Thanks again for watching. And we'll see you next time.